In this video, we're going to develop the Moody diagram that is used to calculate the pressure drop in any of our laminar or turbulent pipe flows. These are the major losses, and subsequently we'll look at minor losses due to the other things, uh, fittings and valves and elbows that we put on our piping systems. The Moody diagram gives us all we need to know to solve for the pressure drop due to the friction in the pipes, which we refer to as the major losses. So in order to start this journey, we're going to look at the Bernoulli equation, but we're going to add a term to account for losses. So our Bernoulli equation, if you remember, had the energy due to pressure, the kinetic energy, and the gravitational potential energy being equal between points 1 and point 2. And if we have friction losses, we have to add back some energy that was lost due to friction on the two side, because we will have lost energy due to friction, we have to put it back to make these things equal. And so we'll add a term that is rho g h l, where h is the losses that we have in the pipe. And it's going to be uh, in units of head or units of meters in order to account for the losses. These losses, of course, I can divide this whole expression by rho g, and we can, as we often did in the, uh, when looking at, at module 5, and then see that we have this term hl. hl is always going to be positive. It's due to losses. Friction cannot add energy to the flow. It can only take energy away. And therefore, we have to use it to make up the difference in energy at 1 and 2, because now we've had losses. And hl is composed of two components. hl losses major and minor. And the major is due to the friction in the pipe, and that's the focus of this video. We'll, in subsequent videos, we'll discuss the minor losses and how to calculate them. But for now, we'll be just looking at the major losses. So that is the pipe friction on the walls due to the wall shear stress, which is balanced by the pressure drop in our fully developed flows. If we have flow in a constant pipe with no elevation changes, this simplifies greatly, and we can see very clearly that the P1 minus P2, P1, if the flow is going from 1 to 2, P1 has to be higher than P2 in order to drive the flow, and that's the negative of the delta P, as we've seen in the laminar flow solution. And that will be equal to simply rho G L, because if the pipe diameter is constant, V1 is equal to V2, and those terms cancel out. And if there's no elevation terms, those two cancel out, and we simply have this expression here. And of course, we can divide by rho G and see that P1 minus P2 over rho G is equal to this. Uh, HL term, the losses in our system. Well, now we can define something called the friction factor, a non-dimensional parameter. And if we look at the non-dimensionalization of our governing equations, we can see which terms are going to be important. We're just going to go straight to an expression for it in here. But this is the very important starting point for our pressure drop calculations. Our P1 minus P2, or divided by rho g, is equal to our friction head loss that we have just introduced, is given by this friction factor F times L over D. We know that if we increase the length of the pipe, it should increase the pressure drop. I also can imagine that as I increase the diameter of the pipe, it should decrease it as I have lower velocities going through that pipe with a larger area. And we see that it's proportional to the square of the velocity. So we'll take this as our starting point and given this equation. And this F here is a non-dimensional parameter, which is the friction factor. Well, we can actually evaluate what that friction factor is for laminar flow. We've seen the solution for the laminar velocity flow. We know all we need to know about it, and you could derive this. But for laminar flow in a circular pipe, that friction factor is going to be 64 over the Reynolds number. You can easily derive that and show that from the equations that we have. And therefore, this HF, this head loss due to major losses or the friction, will be 64 over the Reynolds number times L over D times V squared over 2G. Let's think about that a little more. Uh, just to show the solution that we had, we can express uh, what HF is uh, substituting in for the Reynolds number. It's kind of going backwards from deriving the solution instead of taking the solution and, and going back. But you see some familiar terms in here from the laminar pipe flow solution. But this head loss due to friction, when we do this, we can see that it is, in fact, smaller. As we increase the pipe diameter, it's significantly smaller, it's proportional to the square of the diameter, and it is linear in the velocity. So as we increase our flow rate or increase our velocity, this head loss will increase linearly. So we can express that in terms of delta P by multiplying by rho G, and simply see again, yes, it's linear in the velocity, 
and it is inversely proportional to the square of the diameter of pipes. So bigger diameter pipes will decrease our pressure losses, lower velocities will decrease our pressure losses. We can express that in terms of the volume flow rate, which we're very often interested in. The volume flow rate is just the velocity times the area, cross-sectional area of the pipe, which for a circular pipe is pi over 4 d squared. And so we can write it this way and see once we've done that, in terms of the, the pressure drop as a function of volume flow rate, we now have this inversely proportional to the diameter to the fourth power. As we increase the volume flow rate, we have a significant decrease in the pressure drop as we increase the diameter of the pipe. Of course, if we use a larger pipe, it is more material and it is more costly, but it is still linear in the volume flow rate. So that's the story for laminar flow. And the important equation here in terms of my friction factor, which we'll be using to do our calculations, is that it's 64 over the Reynolds number for the laminar flow. Turbulent flow is a more interesting story. And in turbulent flow, we find from experiments, much like the oil line experiment, where we put in different pipes with different roughness, or perhaps we create roughness on the pipe surface of a controlled size of roughness by putting different grains of sand surfaces on the pipes, which is how some of these original experiments were done, we can create these pipes, put the flow through them, measure the pressure drop, and look at the results. And what we see is that the pressure drop in the turbulent flow is, of course, it's going to be higher when we have a longer pipe. It's going to be smaller when we have a smaller diameter. So we have the non-dimensional L over D. And we have uh, the V squared over 2G that we had. This is the exact same equation. It's the definition of our friction factor. But now we're looking for the functional relation of F. And what we find with the functional relation of F is we saw in a laminar flow, it's a function of the Reynolds number. It was 64 over Reynolds number. In a turbulent flow, it's not just a function of the Reynolds number. It's also a function of the relative roughness. So what epsilon over D is here is your pipe diameter is D, and epsilon is the size of the roughness. And you can go to a table for a different pipe material, whether it's copper or concrete or cast iron, and see what the roughness dimension is for that. And dividing by the pipe diameter, you get the relative roughness epsilon over d. Now, this is a bit of an awkward equation because it's implicit. In order to calculate this friction factor, this is an empirical relation or a curve fit to experimental data, which will give us the friction factor. But it's a little bit hard to work with because in order to get the friction factor, we have to use the friction factor. And so we need to solve that numerically or iterate in order to get that. We can find an approximation to this which is known as the Holland equation, and it's explicit in the friction factor. I don't need that in this side of the equation. I can solve this directly with these parameters here. I can actually substitute these two equations together and substitute this expression for the 1 over f here and see that I have this expression substituted in for the 1 over f. And I get an expression that's even better, and that is explicit in f. I can solve this right away. Um, once I know the roughness and I know the Reynolds number that I'm operating at. So this will give me an expression for the Reynolds number. Well, I'm going to call that the combined Colebrook and Holland, and it can be used to generate the Moody diagram. The Moody diagram tells us everything we need to know about major losses in fully developed pipe flow. Here is the Moody diagram. I've actually plotted this myself. And what we see in the Moody diagram is the friction factor, that which we need to calculate the pressure drop on the y-axis here. And we see the Reynolds number on the x-axis. And notice that it's a log scale in the Reynolds number. So we have, we're have we going from 100 to 1,000 to 10,000, all the way up to 100 million. And here was our 64 over RE. There is the line that is 64 over RE. That's our solution that we were able to solve for uh, laminar flow. And I've extended this down as a dashed line, as I've explained we can have laminar flow to much higher Reynolds numbers. But once we're above 2,300, then if there is a disturbance present, it will be amplified and will transition to turbulence. When we transition to turbulence, we have the empirical relations over here, or the curve fits from experiments, ultimately, in the expressions that I showed on the previous slide. And they are now a function of roughness. And if we have a smooth pipe, we see this curve down here. And as we go with increasing roughness on the pipe wall, we see that the friction factor is getting larger and larger. And we see this interesting behavior that as we go to high enough Reynolds number, 
the friction factor becomes independent of Reynolds number. It becomes a constant value, whereas if we're at a lower Reynolds number, it still decreases as we increase the Reynolds number. And this is the expression that's used to plot this. And clearly, in that transitional regime, we have an interesting situation. If we're bouncing back and forth between laminar and turbulent flow at a given roughness, you can see that that friction factor is changing quite a bit. The pressure drop that we have through that system is changing quite a bit. And hence, why we see the flow in the oil line experiment going back and forth between a laminar and a turbulent flow. Well, let's think about the turbulent flow for a minute again. It may be tempting to think that the pressure drop is smaller in a turbulent flow, and of course I've said several times that the pressure drop is higher in a turbulent flow. Remember, this is just the friction factor. It still has to multiply our equation, our important equation, is that P1 minus P2 is F L over D one half rho V squared. And so for a constant pipe length and a given pipe diameter, we still have the friction factor is the number we get off the Moody diagram, but we still have to multiply it by this V squared term. And we saw that when we had an inverse relationship with the Reynolds number, that the flow in the laminar regime, the pressure drop in the laminar regime, was linearly proportional to the flow rate or linearly proportional to the velocity. That's not true in a turbulent flow. As we can see right from this expression, that if we go out to the end of this regime where the friction factor is constant, we now see that we have the velocity or the flow rate squared is what the pressure drop depends upon as this number becomes a constant, whereas in the laminar flow, this number was not constant. So here we have relatively small changes. The friction factor is a number that is between 0 0.01 up to 0 0.1. And don't forget here, we have a log scale. So going from here to here is a 10 times increase in the velocity. Going from here to here is a 100 times increase, is a 1,000 times increase. And so even though the friction factor is a smaller number, the fact that we're at a higher rounds number means that we have a much larger V squared term here. And we do have, in fact, a much larger pressure drop in the turbulent flow. I generated this uh, using a function in Python, and I thought I would put that here for you. I can also provide the file for you to use if you want, but this is the function that I use to do these calculations, and of course I use it to plot that figure as well. And this is the, the definition of the function. This is just the implementation of those equations that are shown on the previous slides, and I use that in a Jupyter notebook to do some of these calculations, as you'll see in subsequent videos. So let's finalize our thoughts on the turbulent flow. Our major losses, the losses due to friction, are given by this expression here. And as we go to the high Reynolds numbers, we go to a constant value. And so we see that our delta P, this value becomes constant, increases with the square of the velocity. We can again substitute in the volume flow rate and see that that will increase with the square of the volume flow rate. And now in the turbulent flow, we see that we have the diameter to the power of 5, the pressure drop due to friction in the pipe decreases uh, as a function of diameter to the fifth power as we, as we go to larger and larger pipe sizes. And so now we have all the tools that we need in order to calculate the pressure drop just due to the friction in a pipe. We have our expression here. We have our expression here. We can go to our Moody diagram and we can calculate what the friction factor is. And we will have to look up the correct sizes for our pipes. And we'll have to look up the roughness for different pipe materials, which you can easily look up for the different materials that we use.